You're asking me to sleep with you so you can help me. But then you know I will never do it. You know, as I was saying that they say your village people do not want you to progress. Malaria has to be the worst enemy of my life. Every three months. I know you guys saw my last vlog, yeah, so after that vlog, things have definitely not been the same with me. I think it's currently past three or past two. Today is a Sunday, I didn't go to church. I've, I have been sick for three days straight, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I've been on my bed and it's been so bad and so sad. It's not even the... Okay, the sickness is part of it, but then it's the fact that it didn't even give me a heads up. There was no prior notice that, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, get prepped and all that. So I wasn't really expecting that I'd be sick. I know, but 30th of March, I was so broken. Look, depression is real. If you have somebody that you talk to, somebody who keeps tabs on you, you don't know what God has done for you. You don't know what God has done for you. You are so blessed if you have somebody like that. So, that's it of March. Before even the 30th of March, I was just trying to stay happy. I was just hanging in there by eating tread, hoping and just believing, look, God will come through and stuff. I was just trying to be very, very optimistic. I hate to not make progress in my life for anything that I'm doing. I hate it when I make five steps forward and then I'm like 20 steps backward. That stuff is draining mentally, physically. It can literally make you just shut down and make you feel like you're probably good for nothing. So that's what I've been struggling with a couple of months now. It's not been easy, you know, having little or no help little or no help at all with anything that you want to do if god doesn't come through you are on your own every single time so it's frustrating to have all the energy and want to do stuff but there's little or there is no help at all the people who normally or naturally should help you asking for stuff in return from you things that they are not even supposed to ask from you things that you as a person you know you can give for example you're asking me to sleep with you so you can help me but then you know i will never do it so i ask it's so frustrating when you're turning around the same circle every single month every single two months three months it's the same story and all that so i think i couldn't take the heat anymore on the third of this month i've been crying so much so broken so so frustrated and I was in the office that day. The heat was just too much. I turned off my phone. But then I was still connected to the office internet. I didn't just want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to breathe. Like, let me just breathe for a couple of seconds. I know the next thing to do, the next step to take. Let me just breathe fresh air. I stayed in the office for a little, a little while and in that little while my mind wandered away i started to think you know these people who commit suicide do they feel pain does it does it hurt lots of people take sniper and all other things do they feel pain agony anguish or anything do they feel it or it's just a smooth process a smooth transition once you just take it you just lie down and before you know you're dead my mind wandered a whole lot i really thought about that and i saw a movie jolly roger and i hope that is true it said our brains our brains are alive for about 15 seconds or 15 minutes before we die so i was like okay so even if you take sniper or anything 
your brain is still alive for like 15 minutes or 15 seconds before you die so you can probably just make peace with god and just tell him that you're sorry for doing what you did but you just could not take it anymore and while my mind was wondering <laughs> talk of god being around all the time i got a message from my boyfriend he was like hey babe and i said hi hey hon what's up how are you doing he'd be like i'm good i'm okay how are you doing and trust me who is a hard girl i just started to cry i couldn't take it anymore i started to cry i was like crying and fighting back the tears this year i already had an agreement with god i'm smelling drugs but there's no drugs jesus i'm smelling drugs Okay, I had an agreement with God that I wasn't going to cry tears of pain or sorrow this year. But we're barely halfway into the year and I'd already cried twice. And it was so painful. I couldn't take it. I just busted out crying. And then I told him, I've been crying. He's not here. We're doing the long distance relationship. But he's not like he's too far, but he's not close. So I told him, I've been crying. I've not been okay. I've been crying and he was like what's wrong i said i don't know because like i couldn't even explain why i felt the pain i felt so broken i didn't even know what to say i was like are you feeling depressed what's going on talk to me i be like look you don't even understand because i don't even understand i started to explain to him how i felt about not being able to make progress significant progress or how I would make progress for a couple of weeks, have my shit together. And before you say Jack, everything is just tumbling down like... Everything is just tumbling down like a roller coaster. Everything is terrible. And I just started to cry and try to put how I felt in words. It was just hard. But then I tried to put how I felt in words and I told him. And it was like, oh, he didn't know I'd been feeling this way. Cause I didn't say anything. I was like, yeah, I really don't feel okay when I, every now and then I just cry, cry or just throw my problems and talk about it. I really, I don't usually feel okay. I feel that sometimes I should be able to chest my problems, but you don't have all the strength. Sometimes you draw strength from people. And that's one thing I learned. And you sometimes just lean on people who give you their shoulders lean on them cry they may not have a solution to their pro to your problems but that little comfort goes a long way so i just i told him how i felt i cried i was fighting back the tears but i just couldn't anymore i just started to cry like cry and then i cried and cried i told him everything and he was like look life happens sometimes you have your shit together sometimes you don't life comes at you in ways that you did not even plan but you know this don't worry just know that i got you and when i read that i just felt some sort of peace to know that i have my own one person to run to because initially it felt like i was every everybody's person everybody's everybody's one person but i never really had my own but then in just a couple of minutes i just felt so calm that okay i have my one person that i can talk to my one person that i can cry to because like i'm like no hard girl to say but i really don't like to show my vulnerability i have trust issues so i don't i don't like to show my vulnerability like that but I was just so happy that I have my one person to talk to and then I had to go back home. I didn't even know he had responded after I wailed and cried my my tears, interpreted my tears into words. I just ran away and left the office because it was just too much. And in the two minutes it took me to walk downstairs, he had already responded. And then I had to go back home. I had to look for what to eat. I just had to behave normal like I was okay. And now that when I got back home, I checked my phone and I saw his response. God, I felt so calm. And I felt so okay. Not completely okay, but like a, a, a weight was just a little bit of weight was just lifted off of me. And then that night, I just told God, Oga, 
I don't have power again and I'm tired. Like literally, if things are not going to work, you know what? Just kill me. Not like kill me, kill me. Don't say like you're killing me. Since like you're just helping me to go and rest. Since you already know that things are not going to work. You're helping me to rest and stuff like that. So I don't bother anymore. That's why I told God. And that was it. So I just want you to understand that depression is real. Nobody fakes depression. Nobody fakes depression. Except that people like that, I think those people are crazy. But depression is real. And if you have somebody to talk to, don't feel like you're bothering anybody. Talk. Let them know how you feel. They can be of help. Let them know why it's biting you. Even if they cannot give you the money or they cannot um, maybe just solve all the problems, they can do a little. And the little that they do is good enough. It will help and it will work. So this is me just, I don't used to, I don't usually do this. I don't usually do this because I don't like to be vulnerable in front of people. But I just felt to let you guys know that depression is real. It's so real. But there's always that one person that God will bring you away that will help you out of it. So don't always try to be a hard girl. Sometimes wear your emotions on your sleeves call your friends check up on your family members if you've always had that one person that you run to whenever you have issues today try to be the one person that someone else can run to for advice when they have issues so that's the end of today's video i'll see you guys in my next one by god's grace when i'm fully recovered because i've not been able to do anything at all i've just been lying in bed and i've not gone to church so I'll see you in my next video when I'm fully recovered by God's grace. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, to share, and to subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.